Less than three years after the launch of its product ChatGPT, OpenAI has become one of the world's most valuable tech startups, reportedly achieving an $80 billion valuation in a recent share sale. Within a very short period of time, generative AI has become big business. By the end of 2023, OpenAI's revenue reportedly reached a run rate of $2 billion. Internally, the company is targeting up to $5 billion of revenue in 2024. While many AI companies have seen their revenue explode over the past two years, so too have the massive computational costs of running increasingly complicated AI models. It is widely believed that most AI companies, including OpenAI, are currently losing money. For example, in 2022, Microsoft launched GitHub Copilot. It's a tool powered by OpenAI's technology, which helps software engineers write code. It has become extremely popular, in large part due to its affordable price of just $10 per month. However, it is estimated that Microsoft is losing $20 per month per user due to the massive data center costs. Recently, Google Parent Alphabet's chairman indicated to Reuters that generative AI chatbots cost approximately 10 times more per query than a traditional Google search. While investors are currently caught up in the AI hype train, it's important to take a step back and ask the question, what is the path to profitability? While there are tons of AI companies, it's very difficult to get a sense of how much money they're making or losing. Tech giants including Microsoft and Google have generative AI offerings, but it's hard to determine their economics as it's all consolidated within their other businesses. There are pure play AI companies like OpenAI and Anthropic, but they are privately held. So our only information about their profitability comes from sporadic media reports. According to a report by The Information, OpenAI's 2022 operating expenses were estimated to be $540 million. This includes $420 million of computing costs, $90 million of employee costs, and $30 million of other costs. ChatGPT was only released in November of 2022, so they incurred very little cost insofar as operating the service. Most of the computing cost was related to training and testing ChatGPT. Unfortunately, we don't have any solid information about how much money they're spending to power ChatGPT now, now that's being used by tens of millions of people. Another AI company, Anthropic, which is a competitor to OpenAI, has raised over $7 billion over the past two years, which they are burning through very quickly. According to reporting by the New York Times, it is expected that Anthropic will seek additional equity financing in the near future. By the end of 2023, Anthropic's Claude chatbot reached $8 million of monthly revenue, or almost $100 million annualized. While this is impressive for such a new startup, it's a pittance compared to the $7 billion they've raised. The biggest cost for AI companies is the massive amount of computing power they use to train and operate their increasingly complex models. Thus, it should be expected that they burn a lot of money up front, with the hope of recouping this cost once they commercialize their product. The more important question is how much does it cost to operate an AI model once it is complete? Stated differently, what prices will they have to charge to make a gross profit? One proxy for computing costs is electricity usage. Operating data centers requires electricity, and a lot of it. According to estimates from LiveMint, one query on ChatGPT4 uses between 0.001 and 0.01 kilowatt hours to process. LiveMint's source for this number is experiments done by Reddit users, so the accuracy is questionable to say the least. But if we take the midpoint of 0.005 kilowatt hours per query, this is about 17 times greater than the amount of electricity used to power one Google search. As a sanity check, the Redditor's estimations are at least within the same ballpark as statements Alphabet chairman John Hennessy made to Reuters. He indicated that AI chatbots like ChatGPT or Google's Gemini cost about 10 times more per query than traditional Google searches. To be clear, the high cost of AI is not due to electricity itself. The average cost of electricity for industrial customers in the US is 8 cents per kilowatt hour. So 8 cents of electricity can get you roughly 200 ChatGPT queries. Electricity only represents a small minority of the costs associated with building and operating a data center, but it's a pretty good proxy for data center usage. The largest cost of AI data centers is the upfront cost of the GPUs. In the calendar year of 2023, NVIDIA generated roughly $61 billion of revenue, more than double the amounts it made in the previous year. Substantially all of this growth can be attributed to artificial intelligence applications. Most of the GPUs are sold to cloud service providers such as Microsoft, Amazon, and Google. The cloud service providers then lease their computing power to AI companies such as OpenAI, Anthropic, etc. They disclose that 13% of their revenue is attributed to a single customer, which they call Customer A. Furthermore, 19% of revenue was attributed to a single indirect customer. That's $8 billion and $11.6 billion respectively. While we don't know for certain, the most likely candidate for this anonymous customer is Microsoft. 
Analysts at the brokerage firm D.A. Davidson estimate that nearly 40% of Microsoft's total capital expenditures are now spent on NVIDIA GPUs. In the calendar year of 2023, Microsoft spent about $35 billion on capital expenditures. If Microsoft was indeed NVIDIA's largest customer, they would have spent about 33% of their capex on NVIDIA GPUs, which is at least within the ballpark of D.A. Davidson's estimate. With companies like Microsoft spending billions upon billions of dollars to build out new AI computing capacity, will the end demand for AI applications be enough to justify this? If we look at the AI value chain, the cloud service providers are collectively spending tens of billions of dollars on NVIDIA GPUs and other equipment. Once they buy the equipment, they incur ongoing costs to operate their data centers. AI startups like OpenAI and Anthropic rent computing power from the cloud service providers. The cloud service providers themselves need to make a profit, so they charge a markup over their own cost. Ultimately, the AI startups need to charge their own customers a high enough price to pay for all of this. Earlier in this video, we talked about how Microsoft is losing $20 per user per month on their GitHub Copilot. Microsoft is presumably using its own data centers to power GitHub Copilot, so it's not clear how these costs are calculated. It's possible that Microsoft's cloud computing business is making profits at the expense of GitHub Copilot. It can be hard to decipher the real economic situation when intersegment transfers are involved. Another example we can look at is Anthropic. A publication called Contexto claims to have gotten its hands on some of Anthropic's financial data. According to them, Anthropic's gross profit margins are around 50%. Cost of goods sold only accounts for the ongoing cost of operating the AI models once they are complete. Additionally, they claim that Anthropic incurs up to $100 million of server costs to train each model. It's unclear what is referred to by a model. Anthropic recently released its Claude 3 model family, which includes three models, Haiku, Sonnet, and Opus. If it costs $100 million to generate each one, this would be $300 million in total. Given that the company recently raised $7 billion and is reportedly burning through it very quickly, $300 million of server costs to develop the Claude 3 family is certainly possible, although they don't cost the same amount to develop. The largest model, Opus, certainly costs much more than the smallest model, Haiku. Anthropic offers a customer chatbot called Claude Pro, which costs $20 per month, but it is believed that most of their revenue comes from their enterprise offering. Their enterprise offering has a consumption-based pricing model based on tokens, each token represents approximately 3.5 English characters. Let's say the average input prompt is 50 words, which would be about 350 characters. This would cost about 100 tokens. The output is generally longer than the input. Let's assume 250 words, which would be roughly 500 tokens. If you use their cheapest model Haiku, one prompt in response will cost you about 0.0065 cents. If you use their most expensive model, Opus, one prompt in response will cost you about 4 cents. While 4 cents doesn't sound like a lot, it can add up very quickly. The reason that Anthropic is already able to make a gross profit is because of their consumption-based pricing model. Power users can rack up bills in the hundreds of dollars per month. We can see how GitHub Copilot was losing so much money. The people who use it are mostly software engineers who code all day for a living. They could easily give it 100 prompts per day as they experiment and try to refine the outputs. Even if it only costs Microsoft one cent per prompt, that could be one dollar per day or close to thirty dollars per month. And they were only charging ten dollars per month for it. The ten dollars per month was likely an intentional loss leader to get software engineers used to the experience. Microsoft subsequently released more powerful and versatile versions targeting businesses and large enterprises. These cost nineteen dollars per month and thirty-nine dollars per month respectively. OpenAI appears to be using the same strategy. Their free version of ChatGPT is obviously a loss leader. Even ChatGPT Premium at $20 per month probably isn't even generating that much profit. But by gaining a user base tens of millions strong, many companies are willing to pay OpenAI to make ChatGPT plugins. ChatGPT's consumer offering also creates market share and market awareness. This helps them drive sales for their API, which follows a similar consumption-based pricing model as Anthropic. This is likely where the bulk of their revenue comes from. It's certainly possible for AI companies to be profitable so long as they charge a high enough price for their services. But the more you charge, the less people will be able to afford it. The question is, will the market be big enough to justify the investment? In the fiscal year 2024, which is the 12 months end of January 28, 2024, NVIDIA generated $47 billion of revenue in their data center segment. This is $32 billion greater than what this segment generated in the previous year. Substantially all of this $32 billion of growth is related to AI end markets. 
So how big does the end AI market need to be to pay for this investment? If you amortize the investment in NVIDIA GPUs over 10 years, the cloud service providers will incur $3.2 billion of depreciation per year collectively. They also have to buy other related equipment to pay for the ongoing operational costs of the data centers. To make things simple, let's say these other expenses double the total costs. So the cloud service providers need to generate $6.4 billion from their AI customers per year to break even. The AI startups themselves need to make enough gross profits to cover their massive R&D expense and corporate overhead. For them to break even at scale, they will likely need to charge their end customers double whatever they pay to the cloud service providers. This lines up with Anthropic's reported 50% gross margin. So the AI startups will need to generate $13 billion of annual revenue. To achieve a 50% gross margin, they will have to charge the end customers a high monthly cost. So let's say $40 per month, which is the same cost as GitHub Copilot Enterprise. To generate $13 billion per year, you need 27 million enterprise seats, each paying $40 per month. These are all very rough estimates because of the limited information that we have. The point of this exercise is to show just how massive end AI adoption has to be to cover the cost of the NVIDIA GPUs purchased in 2023 alone. The current growth in AI is currently funded mostly by venture capitalists and cloud service providers. Companies like Anthropic and OpenAI may be generating gross profits, but they're still burning through billions of dollars on research and development. Cloud service providers and other tech companies are spending tens of billions of dollars on NVIDIA GPUs in hopes that the AI end markets will grow enough to justify this investment. It was recently reported that OpenAI CEO Sam Altman is taking to sovereign wealth funds in the Middle East, trying to raise $7 trillion to build new AI chips. This is obviously absurd and is never going to happen. Regardless, it portrays a mindset shared by many tech bros and investors alike. The idea is that the opportunity in AI is so big that an almost unlimited amount of investment can be justified. But there's no definitive proof that enough end users will be willing to pay high enough prices to make the industry viable. Many people say that generative AI represents a paradigm shift in technology, with some saying its impact will be even bigger than the internet. But it's important to remember that in the early days, the internet was expensive and inefficient. It nevertheless created a huge amount of hype and investors were willing to fund thousands of dot-com companies whose businesses were not yet viable due to the primitive nature of the internet at the time. This malinvestment ultimately created the dot-com bubble. Eventually, networking technology became more efficient and cheaper. Once the majority of the population gained access to affordable high-speed internet, online business models finally became viable at a large scale. But this didn't happen until many years after the original hype cycle, and most of the early dot-com companies had already gone bankrupt. For AI to have the same revolutionary impact as the internet, costs need to come down a lot. This will happen eventually, but it could be many years into the future. Alright guys, that wraps it up for this video. What do you think about AI? Do you think the current level of investment is justified? Let us know in the comments section below. As always, thank you so much for watching and we'll see you in the next one. Wall Street Millennial, signing out.